Bueno, folks, almost on time today. Morning, almost on time today. I apologise for being slightly late. It's murder trying to find somewhere to park one of these bloody things. Anyway, it's Indy Truck Davy in the truck coming to you today for Hoyk, where it's overcast but clearing and it's about four degrees. See, tiny wee town, try to get parks, a bloody nightmare. I do apologise for the fridge running, but that's the way it goes. Okay. Right, let's get ourselves organised here. Um, right. How we doing? 86 on board. No bad. Let's get this broadcast underway. We'll start with the coronavirus update as usual. And then we will move on to the review of yesterday's news or the stories that I've picked to anyway. Maester and believe it or not, were headline news, so you'll have known these ones. What you'll get is Davy says. All right, so here we go. Coronavirus update. These are the figures for the 26th to the 1st, 2021. All right, tested in Scotland since the pandemic reached our shores. We have 1,504,563. And that was plus 4,577 from Monday to Tuesday. Crap. We need to be testing more people than that if we're to get an idea of how much is in the community. Right. Tested positive since the pandemic reached our shores, 174,002. And that was up 1,049. But 1,049, well, let's face it, they only, test, they only tested 4,577. So 1,049 of them were positive. That's a quarter, more or less. So I'm sure if they'd managed to test more people, they would have found more positives. All right, in hospital, there's 2,010 COVID sufferers, and that's doing six. In the intensive care units, there's 149 and that's doing two. Vaccinated, there has been four, uh, 437,900 um, people vaccinated so far in Scotland, and that was plus 22,498. You keep that pace up, it's almost 100,000 people a week. That's no bad. Deaths, sore one again, folks. I'm sorry to report that there were 87 additional deaths from Monday evening. Tuesday. I dare say a lot of them died at the weekend and they were only getting a chance to be registered on Monday or Tuesday. Okay. Community and hospital deaths combined stand at 7,448. The National Records of Scotland will give us an update today, but we already know there are an additional 400 plus to be added to that number, which will take it to 7,900 odds. Maybe even hit the 8,000 mark today. All right. Okay, then, let's move on to the news reviews for the 26th of the 1st, 2021. Tuesday started exclusively in the rags on the rollout of the vaccine in Scotland. All the, new pa all the new newspapers say it's uh, going too slow and needs to speed up. SMP bad um, and crap stories were the manner of the day, right? The problem seems to be supply, folks. Right, now, the vaccine into Scotland was initially told they would get um, 700,000, that's since been up to nine, uh, 998,000 or something like that, just short of um, a, a million, right? <coughs> but it seems that there's still, most of it is in Movanto depots, waiting for it being drawn down, okay? Now, the Scottish... <coughs> Sorry, I don't know if you can see this, but I'm covered in flour. Hey, the Scottish um, government are following the guidelines of the programme set out by the Joint Committee on Vaccines and Immunisation. Right? <coughs> so they're very specifically targeting um, the over 80s, care homes, um, elderly care homes, and care homes in general. Um, health and social care st uh, staff as well. Now, the over 80s who live at home are especially a problem because health and social care staff 
who have got to go to their homes and vaccinate them, also have their own duties to perform their normal everyday duties in their communities to perform. So, you know, it's a time issue um, as well as a supply issue. All right. Now, <coughs> that's about all that can be said in this. It will be rolled out, it will go faster. They seem to be on track to have the L that the over 80s done by the beginning of February, or the first week in February, and then at, at the moment they're also vaccinating the 70s to 79s in tandem. So it is picking up. And as the age groups get younger, it will go much faster because younger, fitter people will be able to travel to mass vaccination centres, whereas the elderly in the care homes and in their own homes can't do that. It takes much longer to get rid of them. OK. Right, Tuesday. Um, a distasteful argument over vaccine supplies into the EU block um, between the EU and the UK has broken out and it is, let's just say, in very bad taste. Um, and I mean in very bad taste. So... You know, there's a bit of tit for tat going on here. The EU says they're going to hold back the Pfizer va uh, vaccine for here. <coughs> and uh, basically, um, the AstraZeneca vice, uh, vaccine from here isn't going anywhere. England's soaking up, or the UK is soaking up, the whole body of lot that their production can make. Now, the argument seems to be about when contracts were signed. All right. The UK, knowing it was going to need a vaccine and knowing who was going to um, a research and to produce the vaccine, pre-ordered up to, um, I think it was up to nearly 700 million doses. For 55 million people, don't quite get it, but that's what they've pre-ordered to all the vaccine companies. All right. Now, um, so the EU are talking about a cutting or restricting the Pfizer vaccine getting to third, what they're called third countries. And as I say, the UK's more or less bought up all the AstraZeneca vaccine that's in production at the moment. <coughs> we'll get a wee bit more of that as we get further down the report. All right. Tuesday, the Hollywood, uh, the Hollywood inquiry into the mishandling of the sexual harassment claims against former First Minister Alex Salmond met behind closed doors to see where they're at in the inquiry. You know, the committee have been complaining constantly about no cooperation from the Scottish Government <coughs> and no cooperation from uh, Mr Salmon. <coughs> Compel them to come in. You're a Hollywood committee. There must be the power there to compel them to comply. Don't get me wrong. As far as I'm concerned, right now at this point in time, it's a bloody distraction. And it could well put a big crack in the yes movement unless we keep our eyes on the prize. Anyway, they, they met yesterday behind closed doors. So God knows what they were saying. One brain cell Bailey was probably shouting like a loony. And Linda Fiabiani was probably sitting there like, that. oh my bloody God. Okay. Moving on. Tuesday, Deputy First Minister John Swinney um, dons his hat as Education Secretary to announce an additional £30 million in funding for the university sector. 10 million to cover uh, lost revenues uh, for the universities and 20 million to cover lost revenues and accommodation costs for students, all right? Mr. Uh, Swinney, at the same time, informed parents of kids in school that uh, remote learning will stay in place until at least the middle of February. And Davy says, oh no! Because Sarah and I are having to homeschool the brat, and by that's her bloody gone. I'm glad I'm out working the new, and she's at home homeschooling the brat. <laughs> ah, well. Tuesday, the Scottish and Welsh government. Hey, eh, on all, hold on. Aye, Tuesday, the Scottish and Welsh government announced that they are in talks with the EU eh, to remain in the Erasmus Education Programme. Right, this will put Westminster's nose well out of joint. The Scottish and Welsh Government bypassing the UK Parliament 
and going straight to the EU to negotiate the rain deals. Wow. If that doesn't put Westminster's nose out of joint, nothing will, right? Also, Tuesday, the UK government uh, announces it's to launch a new global but limited equivalent to the Erasmus scheme called Turing, right? The UK government uh, had initially said it would stay in the Erasmus programme, but pulled out last minute, claiming it was too bloody expensive. If it was too expensive, how come the Welsh government and the Scottish government are in negotiation to stay in the Erasmus scheme? What Westminster was basically trying to do was shut these islands down to everybody but their control. All right. So as I say, in the first part, where the Welsh government and the Scottish government are bypassed Westminster and are negotiating direct with the EU about staying in the Erasmus scheme, will really, really get up the Conservative Party's nose. All right. Tuesday, the Westminster government and the Office for National um, Statistics announced that COVID deaths um, UK-wide had topped 100,000. Now, there's two sets of reports out yesterday. One has it at 100,000 and 100,126. 100, and the other one has it at 107,096. Wow. What can one say? You know, at least 94,000 of these were in England. If you take that upper number of 107,000. Um, Unbloody believable, all right? So far since the Tories came to power 10 years ago, we benefit changes, um, and of course the pandemic, they have now managed to wipe out 320,000, or 327,000, depending on which report you want to believe, UK citizens needlessly. The benefit changes, we um, benefit sanctions um, and the persecution of the disabled and then the atrocious, and I mean atrocious, response to COVID. It's bloody frightening. So I went and had a wee look at how other island states have got on, right? Greenland, Australia, New Zealand. Now, New Zealand is a, the one I'm going to cite right now because it's about Scotland size and most of my reports are about the people here and about the Scottish government and about Scottish independence, OK? So, New Zealand, right? What it did was it grounded flights, closed the ports and to date, since the pandemic began, New Zealand have had 2,200 and 50 cases and 25 deaths in a population of 5 million people. A comparable population to Scotland. And that's why I picked New Zealand to have a look at. New Zealand is a rock in the middle of the sea. The UK is a rock in the middle of the sea. I've been saying this since last April, people. People who have been watching this since last April know this. We live in a rock in the middle of the sea. We only to pull up the drawbridges, ground the bloody planes, shut the international through hubs, and hey presto, a hundred bloody thousand people would be alive a day. Including my father. You know, we'll get to the bojo bit in a minute. But I'll tell you what, incompetence. Just as well that they wrote into the coronavirus bill down that road that they can't be held comparable for any of this. Because I've said this before. The two Johns and I were talking about this in the Indy Cafe the other day. In the operations room down that road in West Mon uh, Westminster. There's a big bloody bookmark pandemic. It's updated every 10 years. And it would appear pretty Patel went into the look at it last March as it's come out in the bloody newspapers that last March she was screaming, shut the bloody place down. But I can assure you it's there, the big bookmark pandemic. There are standing orders doing that road for everything. And pan bloody demics wanted them. And that's why we had the pandemic exercises in 2016 where they never acted in any of the findings because the bloody books in that operation room 
are updated every 10 bloody years. Every 10 years. 86, 96, 2006, 2016. That's why with the pandemic exercise in Edinburgh and Glasgow, it's why with the pandemic exercise in bloody London. The book is there. It's marked pandemic. Big folder, pull it down, first page, shut the bloody ports, shut the bloody airports. Nobody dies. Bojo and his mob should be dragged into jail. They wanted to keep the economy gone. Hey. Tuesday, the Office for National uh, Statistics announces the latest unemployment figures for the UK. Unemployment in Scotland fell um, from a 4.5% to 4.4% from September to November. Employment in our UK, unemployment in our UK rose um, from 4.5% to 4.9% or 4.4% to 4.99%. All right. The number of people in employment in Scotland rose by 26,000. Um, sorry, rose by 1,000. Um, the numbers unemployed in our UK went up by 26,000 over the same two months. All right. Youth unemployment in Scotland sits at 24%. Youth unemployment in our UK sits at 44%. So if you flip that and it's heed, 56% of the youth in England, Wales are a unemployed. 26% of the youth in Scotland are unemployed. And that's because we have a programme that sees um, young people who leave school get into a fast track for higher education, um, apprentices, apprenticeships, or a, um, into work, what they call onto a positive outcome. That programme has been running for years successfully here in Scotland, and that's why our youth are not suffering as badly here in Scotland as the rest of the UK. The other reason why Scotland's unemployment trend isn't as harsh as the rest of the UK so far, well, I need, need to caveat that so far, is because we have a diverse economy. We have manufacturing, we have services, we have financial services, and we have a energy production. Um, and we have a massive food and drink industry. So we have a lovely diverse economy up here, whereas down that road, it's 80% service sector. And the service sector are fleeing the UK at a rate of knots that would make your mind bloody boggle. <coughs> Tuesday, an abattoir in Angus closes for two weeks after a COVID outbreak at the plant. Quality pork products in breaking closes after 19 of its workforce test positive for COVID-19. The abattoirs and produ food production plants seem to be a, a source, a place where this stuff can uh, move about quite freely. It has to do with the environment they work in. It's cold, it's drafty, it's perfect. Right, Tuesday. Um, Professor um, James Chalmers of the University of Dundee says rich countries are hoarding the vaccine to the detriment of poor countries. Professor Chalmers, uh, Chalmers a respiratory illness specialist says that uh, low and middle income countries are being left behind as richer nations and states buy up the world's supplies. Professor Chalmers points out the bloody obvious, right? There is no point in the richer countries um, holding the vaccine and vaccin uh, vaccinating all their own population. Because if the third world uh, countries don't get vaccinated, then we have no, we learned quite quickly that this, vac this uh, virus mutates very, very quickly. And they think at the moment that they're going to have to tweak the vaccine already to accommodate the South, South African strain. So if the rich countries hoard this vaccine, I mean, Canada's got 300 million on order. The UK's got 700 uh, doses on order. What are they going to bloody well do with them? Let them bloody well rot. Well, they need to get into these poor countries because if we don't vaccinate the whole bloody planet, we're wasting our bloody time. Huh? 
we will never get rid of this bloody pandemic unless the whole 6.8 billionaires get a jab. Tuesday evening comes round and Bojo the Clown takes to the TV to salute all those who have lost their life to COVID. Bojo the Clown tells the UK public that he's responsible for all the actions of his government. He's sorry about all our relatives being dead. I don't really give a damn about the sorry. I already know that this could have been avoided. I've been talking about it since last April. I don't want his bloody apology. I want his bloody resignation. And I want the prat put in jail for putting the economy above our relatives' lives. Tuesday, at the same time Bojo the Clown was on the telly saying he was sorry um, for a, every life that was lost, his government was informing the public and the press that the super lab under construction at a secret location in Scotland <coughs> has been halted uh, to the assess whether a additional testing, PCR testing capability is going to be needed, right? Now, the one in Leamington Spa in the Midlands will go ahead. But the one in Scotland is a, in a secret location that none of us know about. And a, there's no been a shovel put in the ground, I can assure you. Because if there had been a big building site on the go, we would have bloody well known about it. But what's more important, they were talking about the tail end of last year putting this into place and the beginning and uh, coming online early this year. So it must have been a renovation in an existing building. But a secret location in Scotland, but we know where the one in Leamington Spa is. Why a secret location in Scotland? Because it was never bloody on the cares in the first place. Somebody's talking pish, and somebody doing that road in the cabinet offices went, hold on a minute, if we don't make a statement here, the jocks are going to notice that there's no shovels in the ground, and there's no buildings being refitted as a laboratory. Right? So there was never going to be a super lab here in Scotland. It was all bollocks. And the press release yesterday emphasises that it was bollocks. A secret location in Scotland. If they were building a lab in Scotland where they're trying to bolster the UK, they would have Union Jacks all over it and singing its bloody merits. But there was no lab. There was never going to be a super lab in Scotland. It was bollocks and it was waffle. Right, and I've saved this story for last, folks, because I know a lot of you won't know about this one, all right? But Tuesday, the Electoral Commission issues a report that said the Conservative and Unionist Party had illegally... <laughs> um, ..had illegally racially profiled 10 million voters on the run-up to the 2000 and 19 um, election. All right. Now, the Electric commission, uh, commission also said it wasn't worth charging anyone as the party said sorry and said it had deleted the data. You get that, folks? They illegally profiled 10 million UK citizens using their second names, believe it or not. So, 10 million Think about that, that's the population of Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. And most of us have got different names for the bulbs down the road. Were they profiling us to see if they could change their negative electoral success in Scotland and Wales? Anyway, think about that. The Electoral Commission said, nah, we're not going to charge them. We're not going to find them. We're just going to accept an apology and move on. Mind, this is the Tories that are gerrymandering the constituencies. This is the Tories that had IDOX give um, counting officers in the 20, uh, was it 2016, uh, 2015, uh, 2014 Scottish referendum, the 2015 general election, the 2016 EU referendum, and the, the 20, was it 2017, then 2019 elections. IDOX were honing out. Um, Kuntz, unverified Kuntz to electoral officers and they were declaring on them. This is a Tory party that's been gerrymandering elections and referenda for years to get what they bloody want 
and the Electoral Commission does not want to find them or even get the police to investigate the fact that the Tories have profiled 10 million ethnics, ethnic minority people by their second name. That's no just creepy. You've got to start joining the dots, people. In these reports, I've been talking about IDOCs, gerrymandering. I've been talking about a, a Palantir um, and things like that, getting contracts in Whitehall. 10 million ethnics, um, uh, ethnic minorities details in the hands of the Conservative Party and they've got data mining companies in Whitehall and all the departments. I think we're going to see another spate of people being deported, put in prison, killed by having their benefits removed. This is as creepy and as sinister as it gets. They are profiling people on the run-up to elections to target them deliberately to gerrymander and to rig elections, folks. Now, that's why I left that to last, because that wasn't in the mainstream press. If you want to read the report, people, go to the Electoral Commission's website. Or, alternatively, jump on a broadcast in Scotland for last night. They did a report on it as well. Okay, but I just thought that would be interesting. You see, I get flagged up with these daft things for the Electoral Commission and things like that. What you do is you register with their website and they send it to you in emails, right? But that, folks, is as bad as it gets. You know, racially profiling people um, to target them, maybe for deportation, for anything actually. It's bloody frightening. And it's it's rigging elections, folks. We the gerrymandering of constituencies, IDOCs and the bent coons. And the Tory parties have got it sewn up. They will be empowered in that road in per per perpetuity, if I can say that word. Um, we need to get the hell away from these nuts. These right-wing fascist headbangers. <coughs> so as I say, I thought I would leave that story to last because that is a mind bender, people. That is an absolute mind bender. Robert, I'll get to your PM show uh, when I finish. So I'll try and get to PMs. I've got over four hundred. I'm sitting. We call condolences about Bill Madan. God knows what else is in there. I'm losing track. Um, right, let's move on to this morning and what the papers have to say. All right. As you can imagine, there's a theme running through the papers today, folks. And uh, it's, uh, it's not good. The Scotsman goes on, Britain counts the cost of COVID. Um, the Times goes on, 100,000 deaths. That's it, just 100,000 deaths and a wee block with pictures on it. People have died. The Eye goes on, 100,162. 100, and that's the death count again. The Express goes on, I'm deeply sorry for every life lost, and it's a picture of Bojo. Sorry, my ass. Sorry. Sorry, my bahookie. The only thing that Bojo cares about is bloody Bojo. The Metro has the same headline as the Express. The Herald goes on, universities count the cost of COVID with £132 million losses. The Daily Field goes on, for pity's sake, get on with it, and that's another um, go at the Nicola and the roll out the vaccine here in Scotland. You know? Uh, the National goes on, today we launch our new drive for independence. So apparently, new drive for independence is on its way. I've been driving for independence for bloody years. You know? <laughs> I've stickered off of Scotland. <laughs> I'll be driving for independence a day when I get off as Brecon. Seven minutes time and all. <laughs> okay, right. The record goes on. Turf wars. And this is quite a funny story, actually. Apparently there's two old geezers have been battling our one square metre of land for uh, 20 years. That's dedication and hatred for you. In the rawest form. <laughs> oh, sickos. Right. Um... 
The sun goes on. She died helping others. Apparently, a trainee nurses uh, passed away fighting the fighting COVID on the front lines. Bloody hard one. Not much to say about that, actually. And the star goes on. Oops, we have created a, a monster. <laughs> and it's a picture of Piers Morgan. And that's to go after the headline yesterday with Piers Morgan for PM. Uh, hey, take one selfish uh, um, nutter who thinks of nobody but himself out of the equation and insert another um, egotistic selfish, selfish nutter that thinks about nobody but himself. Eh? Ah, unbelievable. Right, that's what I've got for you today, folks. Um, but yeah, look up that story for the Electoral Commission, folks. That's bloody scary stuff and creepy stuff. Right, I'm on 39 minutes. I don't have time for a chat today, folks. I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope you found it entertaining. Viewing figures are fantastic. There's 380 he's watching right now. Um, remember, folks, the usual stuff. Be kind to your friends, your family, your community, and observe facts, OK? Face coverings and enclosed public spaces. This stuff is bloody important. Jimmy, you're in the supermarket. What are we doing? There's hand sanitizer. Use it. Because you're picking things up and putting them back down, you don't know what you're picking up. So every time you pass a hand sanitizer, use it. All right. So face coverings and close public spaces. Um, avoid large gatherings. Well, they're not allowed. So if you're at one, you're bloody a pain in the neck. Right. Um, clean hands and surfaces regularly. Two meter social distancing when you're out and about. All right. And if you need a test, book one. Now, everybody look after each other, and uh, I'll be back tomorrow. But look up that bloody Electoral Commission report, folks. It's frightening. Have a nice day.